Hello, welcome to the channel. My name's Chris and today we're looking at the Dwarf 3 and the Seastar S30 smart telescopes in equatorial mode. I'm targeting M101, a galaxy that's currently very high in the sky, and I'm taking 30 second exposures using both telescopes at the same time and I will take 60 of those and have a look at the final images side by side to compare them. So here we have the total of 30 minutes exposure time from the Dwarf 3, just how it appears on the screen initially. So we'll do some processing later in the video. And here is the Seastar S30 example using exactly the same exposure time, 60 times 30 second exposures. Here we have a slightly zoomed in side by side. You can see that the stars are trailing a little bit on the S30 and I did find that it wasn't tracking as well as the Dwarf 3 in equatorial mode with the longer 30 second exposures and you can see if we zoom in further here that you can see that there's some eggy stars on the S30. So following on from just capturing on screen I, I use the denoise feature in the Seastar S30 which is simply a one button push and these are the results takes about 15 seconds with the Dwarf 3 they've introduced Megastack and Stellar Studio so this is just a quick touch upon those the Megastack isn't actually useful in this case because what that what that's useful for is for stacking a number of nights of data together so it allows you to target an object over several nights and then you can click on the files for the several nights and it will stack them all together for improved signal and reduced noise. This does take quite a long time I'm only stacking one night's data here just to quickly demo it and I'm sped up a thousand times if I'd left it at the normal speed it does take 11 minutes but we're nearly done now it's just quickly just a quick demo obviously it's not useful in this example because we're just looking at one night but just to quickly touch upon that then there's the second button from the left is the stellar studio and we can do some processing within the app but you do have to upload it to the cloud and that's what that's doing at the moment you can do you can upload to the cloud to correct star correction as we're doing here on the screen at the moment but there's also uh, a couple of others there's um, there's noise and there's background gradient effectively that you can also upload to the cloud and have that improved but it did fail so here I am trying to do that again it didn't seem to want to upload to the cloud for whatever reason so you can see you've got I'm uploading to the cloud for star correction denoise and auto auto I think must be the the background gradient extraction but all those uploads failed again but for some reason when I looked at the saved image it did look better so I don't know if it's just saying it failed and actually did it I'm just going to give it the benefit of the doubt and we'll zoom in on the the result possibly the result it does look cleaner so maybe it worked even though it said it didn't And here we have a side-by-side -side of the in-app processed images and 
it's difficult to see without zooming in really far, but the, the stars are a little bit rounder on the Dwarf 3, and I think I prefer the colour balance of the S30 straight out of, straight as it appears on the screen, and I've said that before. Let's have a closer look now, and I think I can see a little bit more sharpness on the Dwarf 3 because the stars aren't trailing as much. I did find when I put the S30 in EQ mode, some of the exposures failed because of tracking errors, so it did take longer to require the same amount of data, and it's obviously included some less than optimal frames with some eggy stars. So in conclusion, for this particular night, I would say that certainly the Dwarf 3 tracked better in EQ mode for those 30 second exposures. The S30 did struggle, I noticed, and both of them were polar lined within one degree. So I think the tracking is better on the Dwarf 3. I think the, the color balance is better on the S30 and the, the in-app processing is much more simple because you press one single button. But the Dwarf Freeze Mega Stack, which is a feature which allows you to combine multiple sessions together, as well as its improved tracking in EQ mode, means that I think you can probably push that device further. And as a result, I think that's better the better option if you want to progress in your astrophotography and conversely I think the, the S30 is the better option if you just want something incredibly simple to use in out azimuth mode using the default 10 second exposures I think it does win for that and seems to do a better job at that but because of the trailing stars in EQ mode despite being well polar aligned I think the Dwarf 3 did better over these longer exposures in EQ mode. So thanks for watching and a big thank you to my channel members and Patreons and I'll catch you on the next video.